Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 03636 59 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. So this night, we will begin by looking at Amos chapter 3. Are you there? Eh? I would like to read from verse 1. And if I can get to verse 8, or even a little more than that, but I just want you to note that scripture as we take off tonight in understanding our role in what God is about to do. Our portion, your own part in what is about to happen. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest? When he has no prey, will a young lion cry out of his den? If he have taken nothing, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth? Where no gene is for him, shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city? And the Lord has not done it. Surely, the Lord God will do nothing. But he reveals his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Amos chapter 6. Amos chapter 6. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. And trust in the mountains of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. Pass ye unto Kalne, and see, and from thence go ye to Hamath, the great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms? Or their border greater than your border? You that put far away the evil day and cause the seat of violence to come near that lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the storm. 
that chant to the sound of the viol and invent to themselves instruments of music like David that drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the chief ointments but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Therefore now shall they go captive with the first that go captive and the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. May the Lord bring insight and wisdom to his word as we read tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm dealing tonight your role, your own part in what God has declared to do in our generation. If what God is about to do in our time does not require or does not involve or has nothing to do with your personal input, God may not even speak to you. He will do what he says he will do. If you have no portion in what God is about to do, then there will have been no need for God to bother you about announcing what he wanted to do in our time. Every time God makes an announcement in the ear of a man, Every time God makes an announcement in the ear of a person, either a man or a woman, it is because there is a role that man, that woman is required to play. Every time God comes, either by prophetic declaration, or by instantaneous announcement of what you want to do, and you happen to hear, or he decided to focus on you and tell you and say, I will do something like this, just know quietly in your heart that God has done that because there is a specific role that you have to play in bringing it to pass, no matter how small. God can never roar to any man if there is nothing he wants to do with that man. So every time God has made announcements about what he wants to do in our time, what he wants to do in Nigeria, what he wants to do in this generation, every time God has announced it, God is not a parrot that just speaks to the air. He speaks to somebody. Praise the Lord. Whenever God has announced or taken upon himself to speak in the presence of anyone, that man, that woman, has an indispensable role to play in bringing the purpose of God to pass. And so tonight, I want to begin to look at your role, your portion in what God is about to do now. By the grace of God, as we continue tomorrow, we'll be looking at strategy for your response. But tonight, I'm praying that God could impress upon you as an individual, you also, that there is something that God is looking forward to your life to contribute as a role to play in what he is about to do. God does not speak to men who are passive. If you were passive before, whenever God speaks to you, 
you must change from passivity to activity. God never announces anything he wants to do to any man unless that man has a specific role to arise to play in it. And this is the first issue that I trust that God will cause your heart to see tonight. Before I begin to look at the book of Amos, where our text is being drawn from, and where I perceive God will be speaking wisdom to our hearts, can I just generally remind you that when God came to announce unto Noah that the wickedness of the earth has become so much before him and that he, he, it repented him that he made man and that he was going to destroy man that he had made with his hands and that there is going to be a flood. Let me ask you, why did God come to speak to Noah? Eh? Because God wanted Noah to do what? To act. God wanted Noah to do something about it. And if you go reading your Bible, you will notice that the Bible particularly responded. The Bible spoke about Noah's personal response in that situation. We cannot go to the book of Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7, chapter 8 to discuss Noah's response, Noah's role towards what God was about to do in his generation. But we can read a summary of his response in Hebrews chapter 11. Would you like to quickly look at Hebrews 11 and verse 7, please? By faith, by faith, Noah, being warned by God uh -huh. concerning the events as yet unseen, Noah, being warned by God concerning an event which is not yet to be seen, yes, in reverent fear, uh -huh. constructed an ark, okay, for the saving of his household, uh -huh. by this. He condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Thank you very much. What version did you read? ESV. ESV, thank you. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, God was speaking to Noah about things that have not yet happened. Things that nobody has ever imagined. God spoke to him. Did Noah just hear it and say, well, thank God. Is that what Noah said? What did Noah do? I want you to read it again. The Bible said, Noah did what? Moved. What's the meaning of the word moved? Eh? Action. Action. He moved. When God speaks and announces his eternal purpose and plan in your ears, what is the first response you need to give? You need to move. Those who hear God speak to them and they don't move, they they, they make a caricature of God confiding in them. When God speaks, God does not speak in vain. A lion does not roar in the wilderness if there is nothing to catch. Praise the Lord. When God warned Noah, about what has not yet happened. What has never yet been seen. Nobody has ever seen flood before. 
It has never occurred anywhere. But once God spoke to Noah, this is what I'm going to do. What did Noah do? He moved. He responded. He acted. He did not procrastinate. He did not push and say, till another time. May I inform you that Noah moved. Not that he was not doing something before. Not that he did not have some certain activities or business. But when God spoke, what God says to Noah became the priority. Once you hear God speak to you, there is nothing else to do than to do what? To move. Tell somebody, brother, get ready to move. Sister, get ready to move. God normally does not roar if there's nothing. That's why when we come to read the book of Amos, you will see the cry of God. To a people that he has spoken to. He has revealed his secret to them. He has spoken about what he wanted to do in their generation. And they were going to make nonsense of it. As if he has not said anything to them. It will not happen in our own time in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to move. The Bible said Noah moved. With what? With godly fear. He moved with godly reference. He moved with a sense of urgency. He moved with a sense of divine responsibility. It occurred to him that since God said he is going to destroy the whole world by flood. He said, let me move and prepare eh, a place, an ark for the saving of as many souls that are under my hand and those that will believe. And because he did not know, God did not tell him exactly, are you hearing me, what particular day or hour the flood was going to come. So how did Noah operate? Talk to me. How did he operate? He operated in haste. He operated with godly fear. He operated with a sense of destiny. A sense of responsibility. He operated as someone who is working under a sense of time. He moved because he didn't know when the rain will come. Every day he woke up, he said, Lord, I hope it's not today you are going to send a flood. When he was about to sleep, he was praying and said, God, but I have not yet finished. I don't know whether it will come this night. So he moved with godly fear. Many, many people have heard God speak about what God wants to do. Many people have heard about the things that God is about to do in our time, but they have not moved. They have not moved with a sense of urgency. They have treated what they were doing with a lazy hand. And so it looks as if the promises will not come to pass because the men that God was depending upon to move, they have become lethargic. One of the things that I've told God about that this year must be a year of movement. Amen. You will move in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are not just looking for monuments. We are not just looking for one activity of a moment. We are praying that what God has said to us will make us to move until we become a movement into the purpose of God globally. Did you hear me? This thing that God is talking is going to be global. 
We are moving. We are moving globally. We are sending men forth and say, you go and move there. You go and stand there. You go and do this because God has spoken. The lion has roared. Can you imagine? When God, I spoke to you yesterday about Mary. When God sent an angel to Mary. After that discussion that God said something like this will happen. Because she has a responsibility about it. The Bible said she made haste. And went straight to where Elizabeth was. Praise the Lord. All those that God spoke to, they moved. They rose up to respond to what God is saying. Every time God speaks anything in your ear, listen to me now. Whether directly during your personal prayer time or in a meeting of this nature and God spoke so clearly and it dawns on you that God is speaking to you, what is the next thing God expects you to do? Move. Move. He moved with godly fear. He moved with a sense of divine timing. He moved. He moved. No procrastination. No postponement. No dig dialing. He moved. And as he moved, the Bible said, look at what the Bible said about him. The Bible said, and prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. I don't know whether you ever understand that scripture. That scripture is very heavy for me. He said, because what Noah did, Noah became, number one, Noah condemned the world. Noah made God to be righteous for destroying the world. Are you hearing me now? God was needing somebody on earth who will hear his word and he will obey it. I imagine that when God began to speak to Noah, maybe he spoke to some other people and said, God said he's going to destroy this place. God said he's going to destroy this place. You remember how Jesus said, until the time that Noah entered the ark, the people were mocking. The people were doing whatever they liked. They were drinking. They were dancing. They were marrying. They were giving in marriage. At the negligence of all that Noah said. They were doing all of that as if the lion has no reward. They were behaving as if the almighty God has not spoken. But because Noah moved. Noah acted. Noah obeyed. Noah walked with time. Noah operated within the space of grace that God gave him. He condemned the world. He justified God for taking that decision. And then on top of that, he became the heir. You know when they said the heir? Of all those who now are the heir of, 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 of righteousness by faith. Is that what the Bible said? He became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. That means, I don't know how to put it, the word that is coming to my mind is not a good word, but that's the, that's the only word. He became the founder. He became the foundation of the righteousness that comes by faith. When you obey God, when you respond to what God is saying to you, then God we make you an heir, a founder, a leader of something that God is about to do in your generation. 
if we don't move, even in obedience to God, as God has spoken to us, even what we are talking about today, we will not see it. Am I correct? But for what God is about to do, which is far, far, far beyond all that we have seen, he's announcing it in my ears. He has, he has, he has announced it in your ears. What am I going to do? To move. To move carelessly. To move whenever I'm able. How do I move? With godly fear. With a sense of divine timing. As a man on duty. As a man who doesn't know how long we will have this opportunity. Do you remember? When the word of the Lord came unto John the Baptist in the wilderness. I imagine that he was just studying the word of God and the word came to him. What did he do? We were told that John the Baptist came into all Judea. And he began to preach. He began to say the kingdom of God is at hand. He moved. He did something. And everybody around him, they began to know that something is about to happen. Praise the Lord. All I'm saying tonight is that whenever God has spoken anything in your ears, or in your presence a responsibility to act has come upon you. You can't go back and say, well, thank God for what God has said. The Holy Spirit is requiring that you will take responsibility to play your role in that which God is speaking about and declaring. Now, Follow me back. Now, because I want to walk with this time tonight, I want you to follow me now to Amos. We will read those two passages of Amos. Then we will take another little passage just to illustrate. And after that, you will be praying. All I'm doing tonight is that you will move. God will move you. God will set you ablaze. You will take responsibility for what God is saying in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, look at the book of Amos that we read. Amos, we read chapter 3. And we are reading 3 and 6. Are you there? Right. Amos chapter 3. The first thing he said, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, may I first note that the word against that you see in verse 3 is not first and foremost what God loves to do. Ha, huh, you are not with me. Eh? God does not come in the first instance to speak against you. If you hear God speaking against a man, what has happened? That means God has spoken to him. God has spoken to him. God has spoken to him several times and he refused to move. He refused to act. He refused to respond. When a man had become sluggish and disobedient to what God has said to him, when he has procrastinated and postponed, you are going to see the next passage where they were postponing it. When a man has procrastinated and sluggishly postponed what God said to him clearly, and God has spoken once, God has spoken twice, God has spoken three times, the next time that God is going to be speaking, it will be a speaking against. 
I don't want God to speak against me. I don't know whether you like God to speak against you. I don't. It's never in my, in my, in my desire that I will come to a point where God will begin to now speak against me as if he has become an opponent to me. But the only thing that makes God to come to that point is because he has spoken to them several times. He has told them what to do. He has cried to them. He has shared the body of his heart to them. But they seem to have something else more important. They seem to have other priorities apart from God's word and God's instruction to them. When it comes to that, then God Almighty begins to stand against them. May God never stand against us in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, I believe that God is giving us opportunity. He's speaking to us, he's speaking to us, he's speaking to us as individuals, he's speaking to us even as a people, he's speaking to us as Brothers, disciples in peace house here. May God speaking to us not become a speaking against us. May the Holy Spirit not arise after some time and say, well, I gave them this, I told them this, I asked them to do this, but they did not do it. Let God not come tomorrow to speak against any of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So what am I going to do? Move. Everything that God has said to you, obey him. The speaking of God to a man's life is what gives him power. I was telling you yesterday that every time God wanted to enlarge us, he spoke to us. I know it. Every time God spoke and I caught him and I believed and I moved, there's an enlargement, there's an expansion. There's something going to other lands. Because when God speaks and you take God by his word and you move, his speaking becomes a mobilization. It becomes an empowerment. It becomes an enablement. Every scripture, every word of God you obey releases a divine grace, a divine enablement a divine empowerment and a divine mobilization for you to enter the next phase of God's will for your life. But when you disobey or when you neglect his word or when you postpone your action or you procrastinate, the word that God has spoken to you before will become a word against you. So when I come in this chapter, and God said, hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt. You see, the way God began, God now began to recant what he did for them. How he delivered them from Egypt. How he fought tooth and nail to deliver them from the hand of that wicked Pharaoh. How God said, and I wanted to read what God said in verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Ah! I don't know how to put it to you. But as I'm coming to this passage, I have a very terrible sense in my heart. A sense of indebtedness. That's why I cannot do otherwise. I must obey God. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, you have no other choice. You will obey God. My friend, my brother, we don't have any other thing to do. Those of us that live in Broco, those of us that have come into this discipleship, those of us that have been allowed, allowed 
to hear the word of God the way we have heard the word of God, we don't have any reason, any excuse to do otherwise than to move. I hear God saying, of all the families of the earth, you only have I known. Ah! Well, you know, I don't like to say this kind of thing because it will appear as if some of us were, were being proud. It will appear as if we are taking too much upon ourselves. It will appear as if we are bragging about, about ourselves. But no, if I say anything like that tonight, I want you to know it is not a bragging. It's a sense of depth. It's a sense of, of, of depth that has fallen on my life now. Let me ask you. Some of you have gone from one church to another. From one congregation to another. From one conference to another. If you want to be honest with me. Where have you found the undiluted, consistent, cumulative, analytical teaching and preaching of the word of God without anybody playing on your intelligence, without anybody doing it in order to collect money from your pocket? Have you found any? I'm asking you a question. You alone have I known of all the families of the earth. Sometime I'm sitting back and say, God, why are you revealing this thing to me? Why are you making the word of God to open the way it has opened? Why is it that you are giving me such insight into the scripture? That people have read and gathered and walked over and yet they didn't see anything. Why? Each time I ask God why, he said, you are responsible for what I'm showing you. Some of you will not know that when we started to talk about discipleship, it is not that the word discipleship has not been in the Bible. It has been there. And it is not that there are not brothers who try to talk about being discipled. But when you go and you listen, you will discover that something is missing. Something that could have changed people's lives have not been touched. Friend, listen carefully to me tonight. When I came across, let him deny himself. All the preachers that I've had preached for many years that I've been running after, they only talk about self denial. How you will not wear good clothes. How you will fast. They never seem to have insight onto Mr. Flesh. And I dare to tell you that the word Mr. Flesh we did not get it anywhere. God just brought and introduced it and said call it Mr. Flesh so that people will know that it's a person. It's not a feeling. It is not just some bad habits. It's a person. And unless it is crucified, no man can serve God. They will pray, they will fast, but they will still not be free from sin. We went after the holiness preachers and 
I sat and sat. We fasted. We did all that we were told to do. But we did not get victory. And up to now, I see no so many who went over and over and over and they have not experienced victory. Because this light did not shine to them. And what I'm telling you, if it was just that it's local, you say, where is Boko? No. All the places I have seen that that with God in mercy has revealed to us was the answer to the cry of nations, of tribes, of people, white people, Asians, different kinds. Whenever they came in touch with this, something happened to them. Suddenly they say, but we have never seen it like this before. And each time I hear people say it like that, I never thought they want to clap for me. I only thought they are saying, you are a debtor to your generation. How could God reveal this to you and it will die in Boko? How will God reveal this explosive to you and it will perish in your stomach because you are not moving? I had gone to teach discipleship some years ago, many years ago, in a school of mission. Before I began to go there, they were teaching discipleship and self denial and all of that. But when they said, Rabbi, can you come and help us take discipleship just for two weeks? Something happened. As I was praying, First, they gave me their syllabus. And they gave me the textbook they were using. And as I was looking at this, I heard the Holy Spirit saying to me, put aside those things. Listen to what I need to show you to help me here. Those textbooks, how many has it helped? So I, I politely said, thank you very much. But permit me to develop this course the way God is leading me. They says, okay. At first, they were skeptical. Because it looks as if, what is he going to say that we have not been saying? But I could remember God did something that again put me into a serious indebtedness. What was it? I started. I just took the conditions of discipleship. Those things that you are reading in the uh, conditions and uh, what do you call that book now? Aha. Uh -huh. Those things. Those elaborateness that God allowed us to have. Let me tell you how it came. It was one night I sat there in that village preparing to teach the student the following day. And I wanted to say, what is discipleship? Then the Holy Spirit began. Began as I was noting, noting, noting. I said, God, you mean this is it? Then I started studying the Bible. I started seeing. I said, ah. Oh. Now, the result was that after one week, I'm going to be there for two weeks. After one week, something happened in the whole college. Things changed. People came under conviction. They were going from room to room, from their lecturer to another lecturer, say, I, you think I was born again. I have been wicked. The thing that was lost in those days that you were setting committee about, I was the one that did it. There was a sister that you, uh, you sent away from here, and you said because she was something... I was the one that slept with her. Ah! The entire place changed. So both lecturers and students they were attending the class. And I remember the way God was working. God said, don't leave here until every soul crosses over from the life of the flesh 
unto the new life. So I will sit with individual, I'm telling you, one by one, all night. And I was always watching when the Holy Spirit will do a miracle and suddenly they say, oh God, I have seen Jesus. I have seen the cross. And immediately you will see something let them. A new life came in. And from that moment, they became different. I had to sit with every student until it happens to them. I was saying, God. So when that happened, the entire place changed. People became unusually broken. So the, the coordinators came to tell me, say, Brad, Billy, hey, this thing that has happened, where did you get it? I said, it's not about me, it's God. He said, why is it that we did not know it? I cannot explain. It is not because of me. It's because this generation must hear the truth. And we are responsible for it. So one day as I was teaching the class, a sister who came to that school of mission from Lagos, she was coming from a very big denomination. I still cannot forget what she said. Ah, I've not forgotten because it was violent. Violent. When she had come in touch with the cross and Jesus had appeared to her and she had seen the evacuation of the old man, they came to the class and everybody was giving testimony. If I didn't come to school of mission, if I didn't come for this course, I would have gone to hell. Several people were saying that. Then this star stood up. Oh my God. Brother Agbile, you are a wicked man. You are wicked. Everybody has been saying, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. This sister stood up, looked at my face, said, you are a wicked man. So if I did not come to this village, you will have kept this thing to yourself and allow me to perish. And if I did not come here, surely I will have gone to hell thinking I'm going to heaven. But I'm not even just talking about myself now. What about the thousands, hundreds of thousands in my denomination that are groping in darkness? You know the medicine that will save our people and you have not told them. You're a wicked man. Ragbile, I tell you, you're a wicked man. You're a wicked man. And she began to weep. And I walked out of that class with a sense of indebtedness. I just knew that perhaps perhaps the whole world one day may wake up and confront me and say you are a wicked man. You know the truth that can set men free and you are stingy with it and you are keeping it and you are not moving and you are so sluggish. Brother, I talk to you tonight because something must move out of here. The reason is because the world will demand their blood from our hands if we will not move to do what God has told us to do. Listen carefully to me. For many years, we attended marriage seminars to the point that I concluded that anybody who is serious for God should not marry. 
Because all the marriages that they were describing to us never worked. And this was what made me myself to prepare that I would just be a pope. That I don't want any trouble in my flesh. I need to serve God till I get to heaven. If marriage is going to be this kind of problem, then God came and said, no. The original marriage that I have planned for my people is because you have not discovered it. I say, where is it? He said, Genesis 2 marriage. Genesis 3 marriage. We've never seen that anywhere before. Nobody has tagged it like that before. Genesis 2 marriage. What is that? And what is Genesis 3 marriage? I remember one night for almost 12 hours, non-stop, God would not let me sleep. He kept revealing and explaining to me that this particular marriage was spoiled because of the fall of man. And Genesis 3 marriage started and is the one you met throughout until you came to, to 1 Corinthians and all of that. I said, oh God, haven't you changed your mind? He said, no. He is still intending to restore the marriage of his people to what he wanted it to be originally. He said, that's why I'm showing it to you. And that's why I also want you to marry so that you will be an example, a prototype of what I'm talking about. Now, I'm asking you, maybe you may not know. Those things that we had put together in Marita, uh, what, what do you call it? Building Marita something, uh, no more two and all of that. If you are reading very well, can you take that book and compare it with any other book you have read? Talk to me. I did the same. At first, I was afraid. I said, oh God, is this not going to be treated as a strange false doctrine? Can you show me people that have come in touch with it so that I can be confident that this is the truth? And I remember God did something. I stumbled at one old preacher who wrote something very short, not elaborate. And he began to speak about God's original plan for marriage with the devil's part. He didn't call it Genesis 2. He called it original. I said, okay. It means that this light, it only got lost. It's not that you never gave it before. Brothers, I want to tell you, even if you don't know, I am a debtor for the things that the Holy Spirit has allowed me to see, to hear, to touch, and to understand from his word. It's not for decoration. It's not to make us big. We are a debtor. So I see God speaking and say, you alone have I known of all the families of the earth. I concentrated on you. I gave you everything that will make you good and great. I put into you every revelation that will make you achieve what God wants you to achieve. Maybe you may not understand that several of the things that God allowed us to touch which we have been living to prove it. Because the first thing is we must prove the truth that it is real and it is practicable with our own lives before we can teach or preach it. Praise the Lord. Now those principles which are biblical principles. 
which are the way in which God wants the body of Christ to run before the king of kings will return. God allowed us to see it. Some of you may not understand that we took a risk just to try out with God if living by faith is possible. If you can set up a walk, a walk of God where nobody is paid any salary, whether people will come. Hallelujah. When God was saying to me, because when we started, I thought it was not possible. So when I needed a typist, are you hearing me? I constituted a panel of interviewer. And then we got typist. And then we interviewed. And we employed one girl. And we were paying her level four. And she would dress neatly and come to the office like this. And sit down in the office. And hide the chief executive. When I'm coming, the girl will come. Get on the side. Then she will carry my bag. And put it in. I thought I started, I started a good ministry. Until one day I was praying, God said, there is death in this spot. There's a hyaline in this work. I don't use hyaline. Ah! I say, God. You mean that we cannot even employ anybody? He said, no. All those I will use in my work, I will call them. No matter how highly qualified they would be, I will call them. That didn't look possible. So I beg God, I say, God, deliver me from this hyaline. Please deliver me, oh God, I'm sorry. I prayed. I think one week, the girl just walked and brought a letter. Don't be mad at me. This is my letter of resignation. I say, when will it take effect? He said, from now. She thought I was going to be mad. She did not know that I was being delivered. So I stood up. I said, hallelujah for the Lord God. Then she was embarrassed. I said, sir, why are you dancing? I said, because you are going. God is delivering me from you. Ah! He said, am I a problem? I said, you are not a problem. It's just that this kind of work we cannot bring a hyaline. And I'm happy that God himself is sending you. May God bless you. So I paid her the next month's salary. She said, hey, I thought you would fight me. I said, no, no, I will not fight you. Take more money. Because it's my deliverance. <laughs> now, do you know that from that time, when I told God no more, when we needed anybody to type, we asked God. It was overwhelming when God began to call graduates, graduates, to come and learn typing and be working. It was overwhelming when engineers were told, leave what you are doing, report to Brother Gbile in Boko. It was overwhelming when people of high qualification were being sent. When we wanted to start Calvary Arrows College, I said, God, you know this is now a very serious school. You cannot say that uh, uh, they will register you if you don't have qualified teachers. And God said, is, is that your problem? I told you that this is the way I want to do my work. Ah, I said, but I've not seen this before. Even going to teach secondary school students, he said, if it is my work, no hireling. Ah. Oh God, where will I get this? Where will I get this? God said, that's not your business. Just agree with me that we shall do it. I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I just believe God. Then God began to call people. 
God began to go and call vice principals to go and resign to come and teach. God began to call lecturers from, from higher institutions to come back and be teaching those small children. God began to bring people of high qualification. When the Ministry of Education came to inspect the school one time, you know they were coming inspectors, inspectors like this. They are coming, you know, inspectors, they like uh, terror, isn't it? They terrify everybody. And where is this one? Where is this one? Where is that one? Where is that one? So they came. Number one, I was also in the school that day. Something happened in my very eyes. It was a drama. This inspector from Makodi was going to inspect. Only to meet the director that interviewed and employed her into the teaching service commission. Are you hearing me? Only to meet her as a teacher. <laughs> and she was submitting to her, to this new, this person, her note of lesson, her scheme of work. Then the woman broke down. Say, ah! What are you doing here? You employed me? You were director? Is this what you wanted to come and do and you took early retirement? She said, yes, this is what God called me to do. Ah. They wanted to check another person. He saw that this one was his own senior when they were in school. He said, ah. so they turned to me and said, Mr. Akane, where did what did you do to get all these kind of people to this place? How much are you paying them for them to live that kind of high salary to come here. I said, oh, for your information, they are serving God. We, do, we can't pay them. The man said, now wow. Another one said, I fear you, sir. You know, as they were leaving, whatever they planned collapsed because we gave them much more than they expected. But the question in my mind was, God, can that kind of thing happen? Can we do such a work such that nations must come back here to say, we learned that the word of God is still working. Can you show us how to serve God? We are indebted to God for that. The nations are waiting for the things that God has revealed to us that he has allowed us to, to experience and to practice in our very eyes. Am I communicating with you at all? God said this kind of school, no school fees, no levy. Parents that have anything, if they have anything to, to bring food for their children or support, any, those that have more, those that don't have, that's, we don't bother. Nobody will be sent out of Calvary Arrow because of school fees. Never. How will they eat? But I have had testimonies over and over again. Parents say, we don't know what to feed these children with. After one time, they just become big. We don't understand. Says so the grace of God. Now, I'm telling you that that kind of kingdom work is what God is looking for in his church. We are in debt to the nations to bring the truth to those who are yet to know how can you do this kind of thing? When he came to hospital and God said, even hospital, you are going to do that for me also as a template. We are not, we are not doing it so that we can make money. 
Where will I get doctors? These are very costly people. Physiotherapists. Highly qualified people. We are not talking of uh, all this makes you when you go to all those private hospitals and they use somebody who did not graduate very well and they are now all kinds. We are not talking of that. We are talking of matrons, chief matrons, senior nursing officer, principal nursing officers, those that were experienced. We need consultants, doctors that have experience to come and do something. Where will you get there? I say, God, you mean you want us to do this kind of thing again according to the principle you are teaching? I say, yes, because I want to demonstrate that the principle of God's word is what the body of Christ must go back to if we are going to see the move of God again. And I'm only using you as a template. So when the medical team was constituted, I told them, I said, in this, you know the same principle. Ah! Some of them said, hey, sir! Mm. Let us, uh, you know, when we have consultants, uh, let, let them charge. And then, uh, I said, no. If God is not able to send us consultant, let him wait. Uh, Brother Abba, Peter Abba, are you here today? Uh -huh. Have you been paying any doctor? Eh? Do you have consultant coming? Do you have special clinics that you are running? Eh? And how much do you pay them? You have ophthalmologists, you have gynecologists, you have uh, eye doctor, all of them they come and they are serving as unto the Lord. Where has that ever happened? They are coming from abroad and they want to stay here and just do their own. And when we allow them, they come back and say, Bragbile, thank you for giving us a chance to make contribution. This is the fulfillment of our life now. This is the kind of thing we wanted. We didn't know how to get at it. Friends, the things that your eyes have seen in Goko makes us a debtor. The things that you have heard, the things that your eyes have seen has, has made us debtors. That's why it's not about size. It's not about, it's about something God is doing that is unique. Yes, you may go to big, big churches, big denominations and all of that. That's not the matter. I had to stop one work, the work we were doing in Lagos many years ago. That work was wonderful. Look, we were already on Radio Lagos, they were broadcasting the living seed everywhere. It was wonderful. And the, the work was looking good. But uh, mistakenly, we did a, a meeting, a marriage seminar for one week. The meeting was good. I was teaching and preaching. I thought that the people that were working with me, that they are disciples. I didn't know they are hireling. So, you know, I just came down just to thank this brother that is before the mix. I said, ah, bro, thank you. God bless you for what you are doing. Ah, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Then another brother said, eh, Bragbile, by the way, we need to pay him 12000 for what he did yesterday. 12000 for what? He said, you see, as you see them, when they come to organize a public address, and uh, all these things, it's at a fee. We pay every day. We just set to 12,000 for yesterday. Today we are going to give him another 12. As if the brother was saying, don't thank him. <laughs> he is doing his job. <laughs> but he did not know that he has punctured something. Immediately, 
my spirit got twisted. I said, God, what are we doing here? God said, that's it. There's no work here in Lagos. Close it down. Ah. Then when the meeting finished, I attended the meeting of the organizing committee. Good brothers. But they have not yet understood this principle. They were talking about how they are going to keep the uh, living seed on Radio Lagos, Radio Nigeria Lagos running. And that, uh, you know, we are paying this much. And then uh, there's a sister that we have asked to help us do intro. And that she's charging 30000 to do one minute intro. Uh -huh. I'm hearing those things for the first time in my life. That somebody is serving God and is collecting something charged like that. Ah. I say, hey. Eh? Then they began to talk and say, yes, brethren, uh, those of us that are serious, we are behind this work, so let's, let's perform, let's perform. Ah. And I'm hearing them, performance means, uh, brother something, how much did you say you are bringing? We need it by tomorrow. Uh, brother so and so, how much is your own? Bring it. Ah. I said, where am I? Where am I, oh God? Am I in peace house or somewhere else? When they finished, I humbly thank them for what they are doing. I thank them for their zeal. I praise God for all that they have done so far, but that we are going to stop. Rabile, no! We can't stop. Ah, we have to stop. I said, because this is a strange fire. It will consume this work. This work can, it doesn't, we don't, I don't need publicity. We don't need big manship. We are not competing with anybody. We don't need anything. We are not, we are not, we don't want to be the fastest growing church in the country. No, we don't need all of that. We just want to serve God. Please, we are stopping. Right straight to the uh, Radio Nigeria Lagos that we are withdrawing living seat. Hey! People wrote me all over the country. We are no more hearing your voice. We are no more saying yes. We have to stop it. Because it's not according to pattern. You remember that the first, uh, the second MLR, the theme of MLR was building according to pattern. There's a pattern, and Jesus is that pattern. If we don't follow Jesus as a pattern, we're doing nothing here. The body of Christ is confused because we are not growing according to the pattern of Jesus. The pattern that God showed us that this is my beloved son, hear him. We have abandoned that pattern. And God is saying, who shall I send? Who will bring back this pattern to the body of Christ in revival? That's why we are set up. We are a debtor to our generation, please. So the peculiar things God had revealed to us. So when the work stopped, and I stopped the work for seven good years. Seven years. One day I was praying, the Lord said, now there's time to begin the work in Lagos, but you are going to start it like I've always started my work. You start with one or two. Don't start with a program. Start with hearts that can be trained. Thank God for the work in Lagos now. They are breaking forth and they are growing. They are getting to all the things that God wants them to get to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You alone have I known among all the families of the earth. I say, ah! You gave us this kind of insight. You gave us this kind of revelation. The kind of things that God has said. Listen to me, brother. We are debtors to God for it. Can you imagine I was praying? I said, Lord, God said he wants us to write book. And he gave instruction of how our books must be written. It's not for show. 
It's not to promote anybody. And it's not for any of us to get money out of it. I said, so Lord, how do we do it? He said, I will call men that will do it for you. Suddenly, God began to call people. I remember one of our books. After the first book, that again fell into the hand of Hayali. And God began to say to me, look, what I've called you to do, people don't understand it. You can't just commit it to the hand of men who have not been circumcised for it. If you see us laboriously dealing with the issue of discipleship, becoming like Jesus, learning Jesus, it's not because we want to be, we want to be difficult. It's because we must build according to pattern. We're a debtor to our generation. But permit me to finish on that so that I can get you to where you are going. So when that other one went the way it went, I repented and said, oh God, from now on, if you cannot sponsor this book by yourself, I will not, I will not write again. I will just keep Wait until you are ready to do it according to your pattern. Some of you don't know why the books are the cheapest you could find anywhere all over the world. It's because of what God told us. Can I tell you what happened? We finished working on God's pattern for Christian service. That book on Deborah. The brother that was doing the typesetting did all the things he can do. Then they took it to a press. This press in Lagos. And as they got there, the owner of the press, once he saw Brother Gile's name, said, what? Did you say this book is written by Brother Gile? And he said, yes. Ah! All right. Please bring us the manuscript. And help us there, believe that for the first 10,000 copies, we will print it for him free of charge. Paper, ink, and everything, including binding and everything, he has no responsibility about paying for the first 10,000. They can sell it at any price they like. Are you hearing now? They can use the money to do anything they like. Whether they want to use it to print another 10,000 what is their business. Or this one is our contribution to the work. Where have you seen that kind of thing before? What kind of ministry is this? That's why we feel it is going to be a cheating for me to stand here and say we are launching a book. Somebody that will pay 2000 for this will come out. And somebody will walk around and say, yes, I'm ready to pay uh, 20000 for five copies. It will be an insult and an ingratitude to God whom we serve. That's why you will never see us do it. Because we understand what God wanted to do. And the pattern he wanted us to showcase for the body of Christ. We are a debtor to the body of Christ for this matter. Now, as I'm talking to you now, look at God. We need us, oh God, we need a press to print these books, oh God. Lord, send us a press. But well, you never asked me. So we all repented in our small staff retreat that time and said, Lord, we ask you for a press. You know what happened? Two weeks after, I got a call. Hello? I said, yes. Is that Brother Bile? I said, yes. Oh, my husband and myself, uh, we have decided as a family to give our press to Peace House. But we want to find out whether you will need it. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I thought they said they would give us one machine. Because before this time, I went about pricing. Uh, Charles, do you remember the kind of... Uh, 
you remember that thing that you were trying to get, that that's what we shall be using to print this work. Our eyes can't see where then. Suddenly, that call came. I fell on my knees. I said, God, is that it? He said, yes, you told me to send you a press now. When I sent the brethren to go and see the press, I just that they are going to bring a whole, a whole organization. Every as that press is what you are seeing here. When you have time, just go inside there and see and see Agbalugbu Ori of Yolong Eh? Go and see. The day we were bringing the thing in and people were rolling it, I was saying, ah, God. Just at once. Magnus had to think quickly how to build this place for the gift that is coming because we did not expect it. And as I'm talking to you, even now, people are undertaking to print our book and say it's free of charge on their own. What kind of thing is this? Where is God going with this work? What does God want to teach the body of Christ by this thing he's doing? What kind of template is God asking us to produce for his church all over the world? We are indebted. Our debt is, 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 I don't know how to put it, is invaluable. We owe the body of Christ in our generation something that they are looking for. They are looking for Christ. And he has come to speak to us about Christ, about himself, about how he does his work, about how he raises men about how the purpose of God can be done. And you see, everywhere, every one of us are going, all our brothers, all our staff, because they have understood this same lifestyle, the same thing is happening. It's happening in Cote d'Ivoire, Baba. Eh? Can you imagine somebody just called Brad Dennis and said, look, this, 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 this complex, let's use it for your office. Free of charge. What kind of ministry is this? What is it that God is working in our lives for the body of Christ to learn? It's not just for us to enjoy. We are indebted. So when I see people that God went and pulled, some were general overseers of their churches, so, and God pulled them and said, go and become a disciple in peace house and be doing whatever they tell you to do. This is strange. But we can't stop it because it is God. So now, please hear me. If God has taken this time to do this thing in your eyes, you are a debtor. That's why I'm begging God for Goko brothers and sisters. Those of you that were with us when there was nothing. You are a debtor for the things you have seen. How can you stand up here and, be, and misbehave anywhere else? Heaven will query you. Say, what are you talking about? Didn't you hear the word of God? Didn't you see it practically in your very eyes? Did you not experience what we are talking about? Oh my God, the kind of things that God has done, I'm afraid. He wanted us to start training, training what we call millet. And God said, this kind of training, even though I will bring people from all over the world, they will not get certificates. Because the certificate you will give them is Christ, is their life. You don't get letter of recommendation. You will become our epistle. Ah. I said, God, they will not come. Oh. He said, who told you? They will be pressing to come. 
as I'm talking to you. You have seen it, Abby. You have seen the millet. You see South Africa. You see French people. You see English people. You see all of them coming all over for millet to Boko. This was a prophecy that God said will come to pass. We have seen it. We are debtors. You are a debtor to live right. Are you hearing me? You are a debtor never to preach a wrong doctrine. You are a debtor. A debtor because of the things that God has allowed us to see, to hear, to handle. You alone. Or you only have I known of all the families of the earth. I didn't want to take the next line, but I must read it said, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Because of all that I've shown you, all that I've taught you, all that I've allowed you to see, all that I've allowed you to experience, even as we are talking, talking now, you go to the BMC, you know that BMC is not a, an ordinary local thing. You go there, you see equipment, you see all kinds of things that God is sending by himself. And I'm just watching it. And I'm praying for the staff. I say, may they not misbehave. May they not change the pattern. May they not bring something strange into this place. May God help them to have a sense of indebtedness, the kind that has fallen on my own head. I live as a debtor every day. I could not do otherwise. The things I have seen, the things I have known, the things I have heard, the things that God has particularly taught me, the things that God has allowed us to speak, has put us under a serious sense of debt. And I must not die a debtor. We must pay this debt into the nations. That's why we are bold to say, Lord, send us disciples from different nations so that they can catch this and go back and spread the fire. I see God saying, if you ask me for it, I will still do it. And I'm watching how God is calling men from different places and say, go to that place. Go to that place. There's something there you must catch if your life is going to be correct. If your ministry is going to be correct. If you are going to serve God acceptably, go there. I must not tell you other stories because it will make it look as if these people, they believe too much in themselves. No, we believe in God. But because God has put his hand on our lives, we dare not do otherwise. We just have to behave well. May God help you to behave well. Amen. As we meet, as you carry a tent, as we go here and there, you know, receiving people from all over, may you never take that for granted. May you never misbehave. May the Holy Spirit keep reminding you that you are passing through a divine process. Because this is going to become a movement. So, what is your first role apart from moving? It comes in verse 3. Can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. Now, brothers, except they be agreed, can two walk together? And you know, for me, I'm not just talking about me and you walking together first. I'm talking about you and me walking together with who? With God. May I tell you that God has come to offer you a space as a partner in what he wants to do in this generation. Brother Sam Ahemen is here. The kind of things that we saw when we when we just obey God to respond to the burden for teachers. And I remember telling the brethren, I said, look, brothers, you know, I'm not talking about uh, 
salt in a sachet. I said, what we are talking about is not something that is uh, just among Christians and Christian schools. I said, what God wants to do is going to affect the educational system. Praise the Lord. That's why we said, let's believe God. We will write curriculum that will be adopted by ministries of education as we talk now. Can you remember how many different states, ministries of education that are sending to Peace House to come and give training for their teachers. We are not talking of Christian teachers. Are you hearing me? We are talking of teachers. All primary school teachers, all secondary school teachers, by government. Where have you seen this kind of thing before? What is God about doing around us that is is exposing us to these principles. But can two walk together? I said they do what? They be agreed. So what is the, apart from moving with godly fear, the next thing I'll call you to do is to come into personal agreement with God. What do I call it? Personal agreement with God. Please agree with God. Agree with God, my brother. If you are going to be relevant in what God is saying, you need to do what? Agree with God. Was it Job? Please let me read Job. I think Job said you should agree with God quickly. Is it Job? Please help me check. Is it Job 22, 21 or 21, 22? Please help me check. Brother Dennis, you used to read Bible. <laughs> Can you check for me? I think it's 21, isn't it? Job. Job. Help me find out if you get it. Sister Shade, please. 22, 21. All right, help us now. Read 22, 21, and go on till you get to verse 28 for me. Yes? Now, acquaint yourself with God. Yes? And be at peace. Uh -huh. Thereby, goodwill come to you. You are not reading it very well, though. Now acquaint yourself with him. Yes. And be at peace. Uh -huh. Thereby good will. Uh -uh. Thereby good will come to you. Yes. Now if you are reading the old King James, he said, Thereby good shall come unto you. Uh -huh. Go on. Receive please instruction from his mouth. And lay up his words in your heart. Receive, I pray you the law, the word of God from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. Are you hearing me, brothers? One of the things that you will need to do as your role and responsibility in this, in this move of God is to agree with God quickly. Stop contending with God. I want to see every disciple here Become prompt obedient. That whatever God tells you to do, do it. Don't talk about it. Go and do it. Don't be a talkative. Go and act. Receive, I pray you, the law, the word from his mouth. Uh -huh. And Lay up his words in your heart. Go ahead. 
If you return to the Almighty, uh -huh. you will be built up. You will be built up. You will remove iniquity from your tent. Yes. Then you will lay up gold in the dust. Then you shall lay up gold as dust. Uh -huh. And the gold of offer among the stones of the brook. All right. Thank you. What version have you been reading? New King James. Huh? New King James. Will someone rise up and read that for me from Living Bible? Living Bible. Do you have Living Bible, ma'am? Which one? Eh? Please give him the mic. Quit quarreling with God. Tell somebody by your side, brother. Quit quarreling with God. I don't know what God has done to you that you are quarreling him. Eh? What has God done, Ejo? Eh, Talk to me. What has God done that you are quarreling him? What offense has God offended you that you are the last to make him the king of your life? What is it that you needed that God did not provide that you are still struggling with God? Brother, stop quarreling with God. Yes? Agree with him and you will have peace at last. Agree with God. Some of you are sitting here. God has told you to leave what you are doing. To report to serve him full time. You are still quarreling with God. You started this quarreling when you were 40. You are now 50. You are still quarreling with God. And you don't have peace. There's nothing to show for all that you are quarreling about. Your responsibility in what God is saying is that agree with God quickly. Stop quarreling. Give God space because it's a privilege for you to be used of God at a time like this. Are you hearing me? Stop being stiff naked. What God says, go and do for me. Go and do it. It is your contribution to the move of God. It is your contribution to the purpose of God in this time. Yes, sir. His favor will surround you if you would only admit that you were wrong. You see? God's favor will surround you if only you will admit that you have been wrong all along. Yes, sir. Listen to his instructions uh -huh. and store them in your heart. Where do you store them? In your heart. I am begging all of you that this year God has offered to work with you. God is saying my mighty hand will be upon you. Please agree with God quickly. Agree with God quickly. Receive instruction from his mouth. Lay his word upon your heart. Don't let the word of God pass. I want to see every disciple in this meeting become obedient promptly. Let us all know that this is our time to see the glory of God. This is our time to prove the glory of God again. And what God is going to do will baffle you. His favor will surround you everywhere. I'm yet to see the kind of dimension that God is speaking to me about. And I say, ah, ah, all that I've seen before, he says, is nothing. And I'm already beginning to, with fear and trembling, I'm seeing the new dimension, the kind of thing God said, I want you to do this year, and I'm going to do it. There are things that I thought, ah, could it ever be? And when God said, yes, it is time. We walk into it in obedience. We have seen it done. 
And there are more things that's about to happen. But I beg you, my brother, let there be nobody here who is quarreling with God. Sister, stop quarreling with God. Brother, quit quarreling with God. Agree with him quickly. Brother, go on reading. Read on. If you return to God and put right all the wrong in your home, uh -huh. then you would be restored. Uh -huh. If you give up your lust for money uh -huh. and throw your gold away, uh -huh. then the Almighty himself shall be your treasure. Oh! 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 Are you here? God Almighty himself wants to become your treasure. Money will no longer be a matter in your life. Because God himself will become your treasure. But you see God saying, if only you will throw away your lust for money. You see, during the MLR, God began to deal with an issue. Very strong issue. And I will say, oh God, this is the kind of thing you want the church, the body of Christ, to return to. No longer to serve money. We will use money, but we don't serve money. Money will come into our hands when we no longer look for it. We will be spending money in millions when it is no longer our pursuit. And God is saying to you, you sitting here, if you will cast away your loss for money. Brother, can you repeat that so that we can, we can clean up? If you give up your loss for money, uh -huh. and throw your gold away, yes. then the Almighty himself shall be your treasure. Uh -huh. He would be your precious silver. Uh -huh. Then you would be delight. Then you will delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. And look to God. You will pray to him and he would hear you. Yes. And you would fulfill and he will fulfill all your promises to you. Uh -huh. Whatever you wish would happen. Whatever you wish will happen. And the light of heaven would shine upon the road ahead of you. Amen. Listen. Are you hearing? Will you do this in obedience to God? Will you know that this kind of vision retreat that I'm sharing with you is not just a mere talk? God is speaking to us, giving us direction on what we must do in order to enter into all that he's speaking about. Ah, the other day, you know, I don't know, many things used to affect me, small things like this. <laughs> I was going for Peace House Staff Retreat. Peace House Staff Retreat. And I think I was going a bit late. And I didn't remember. I saw plenty cars parked all around the hall of meeting. Plenty different cars. Ah, I saw a jeep. The kind I've not seen in my life before. I said, I say, which meeting is this? The brother that was with me said, it's staff retreat now, it's staff retreat now. I said, peace out, staff retreat. As if I didn't, as if I was just dreaming. I said, eh? And there are these kind of all manner of cars, jeeps, eh? V8, my God, peace house. The young brother that sat by me said, Uncle, are you, what are you talking about? I said, don't worry, don't worry. I just, I just said, thank God. Because he didn't know where I entered. I entered into the recesses of my heart. 
I remember how when anybody want to come to serve God, people think you have signed your life out for poverty. It, it, it looked as if we were just, that our children would just be dropped out, they would not go anywhere. It appeared as if, ah, how can you do that? You are, be careful, be careful, don't let them confuse you. That's how it appeared. But I was looking at the staff retreat that we used to have I'm sure Sister Comfort will not forget how we use Amako, Amako Hotel for our staff retreat. And that their little restaurant was the big hall that all of us sat in and we were okay. I'm now looking at the staff. In our staff meeting, we have to interpret in French. Are you getting me, sir? We have to interpret in our side for those who, who need the interpretation. We are, we are interpreting in thief language for those who are thief staff. The people that come from South Africa, they are on their own. I said, so even this staff has become international also. So we have to wear name tag now in order to recognize people who are staff. This thing that started in that small room, you mean this has happened? And God said, what you have seen is nothing new. I'm bringing people of different tongues, different tribes, who will be staff of this work all over the world. Americans are coming Kenyans have already come. Gabonese are on their way. The different tribes from the Francophone nations are, are coming. People from the South and the Central America, they are on their way. And I'm looking at God. I say, God, so you are talking of a walk that all tribes, all tongues will be laborers in it and yet it is starting in a little place called Boko. Thank you, Jesus. Now, my friends, stop quarreling with God. Today is the 10th of January. I wish you would draw the line and say from today, 10th of January 2019, no more quarreling with God. No more argument against his will. What you told me to do, Father, I will do it. Where you tell me to go, Father, I will go. Let my life also be an expression of this revival move that you are talking about. Lord, use my life also. He said, when you will do that, he said, my old King James says, then shall you lay up gold as dust, the gold of offer as ordinary stones. Yes, the almighty shall become your treasure, shall become your defense, and thou shalt have Plenty of silver. It's coming. We are not going to be dropouts. Praise the Lord. Everything that is needed for God's work to be done, He will come. It's not my, it's not my business. He knows what to do. It was that our sister, Mrs. Adzenge, of blessed memory. Some of you, you remember our, our dad's sister. We were in MLR 1995. And she brought one Bible verse. And as she read it, 
I knew that's the word of the Lord. He said, for what do you make requests? How many of you were in that meeting and you remember? That sister has gone to glory now. But they are all standing there saying, we were part of that thing. Lord, you promised us. If they can look back and see this tent and see the thing that's happening, they say, thank you, Lord. You did not deceive us. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will me and you walk with God except we agree with God quickly? So I beg you tonight, God has not done it. Surely, the Lord God the Lord God we do nothing except he has revealed this secret unto his servant the prophet the lion has roared who will not fear the Lord God has spoken who cannot but prophesy let me now ask you do you think God is just speaking in vain is the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring when he has nothing to, to catch? Eh? Brothers, the lion has roared. The Lord has spoken. Why will you not respond? Why will you not arise and say, oh God, here am I. Send me here am I, send me. As the Lord needs somebody, here am I, send me. Here am I, here am I, send me. Here am I. As the Lord needs somebody, Oh yes, here am I. Send me. This is where I want to stop for tonight. My portion in what God is saying, because he's speaking in my ears, the lion has roared. God will not have opened his mouth roaring like this if there's nothing to do. And beside the thing that God said before in our very eyes has come to pass. And the new things he has, is announcing now is saying, and I'm speaking it to you because you have a role to play. I'm going to stop on this. When God will allow me tomorrow because it looks very critical, I will come back on, 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 the, on, on, on um, Amos. Then I will be speaking about Amos and some others who took practical steps. And then we shall begin to say, Lord, the things you are sent to do, then we'll be speaking about those issues that God had made clear presently that we must rise up into. You also. You also. If you are not important in this matter, God will not allow you to be in this meeting at all. The things you are hearing, the things you are seeing, the things that you are touching, the things that God is making vivid before your eyes, the things that God is shouting it into your spirit over and over again, they are the things for which everyone is going to say, but I roared in your ears and you did not respond. I spoke in your ears and you did not prophesy. You, you only have I known among the whole families of the earth. I'm asking you tonight. Stop quarreling with God. Noah moved. He moved. If you will not move, then you are not responding properly. 
cast away your lust for money. Don't die serving money. Money is not a worthy God to serve. There's nobody that did it and rested in peace. The day you lay it down and you say, God, now here am I. That's the day all that you have been chasing will start chasing you behind. I have been praying that those of you that God is speaking to, you will, you will sit down this year. Let's talk together. If God is saying, I want you in business for my glory, for my purpose, come, let's talk about what is God's pattern of doing business. Those of you that God is sending to be in academics, come, let's discuss what is God's pattern and what is God's purpose for you to be in academics so that you can make quick progress in it. Stop quarreling with God. Stop moving at loggerhead with the Lord. Stop procrastinating obedience to a clear instruction. If God is saying, you also go into that vineyard and take your place. You also go into that cavalry arrows, take your place. You also go into that press. Whatever is right shall be given you. And someone may be, God may be saying, you also Bring your life out. We need someone to go to that nature and set up this kind of work there. You also. Go quickly and learn French because we need you in the Francophone nation. Go and perfect your outside language because we will need you in charge. And in Niger Republic because you are the one that have seen this life. You are the one that can tell the story of how it began. In recent times I began to ask Lord, how do you want to move? And God began to remind me. He said, of these people that have been with us from the baptism of John. Have you, oh God, appointed to have a portion of this ministry who might go with us to be a witness of your resurrection? Do you know that it was not for nothing that God allowed you to be here from the beginning? You are a debtor. Don't die a debtor. During the MLA, there was a call. Many people came out. Thank God. But tonight, there's a call again. Stop quarreling with God. Don't think that what God wants you to do in your lifetime, you can keep postponing it, postponing it, postponing it. Don't let the word that is coming to you turn to be a word against you. May the Lord help us tonight. But I hear Jesus Christ standing here tonight and say, this is another day that God has set. So, and today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Some people had him, but the word they had did not mix with faith in their heart. And so they perished in the wilderness. Forty years, God was not happy with that generation. This night, God is saying, stop quarreling with God. Hand over to God tonight and say, Lord, 
enough of this quarrel. I surrender my life to you. Let's, let's arise and pray. And as we are praying, Holy Spirit is saying tonight, stop quarreling. Stop struggling. Stop looking here and there. God wants to become your treasure. Agree with God quickly. Agree to do what God is telling you to do. Agree to obey him as he has spoken to you tonight. Thank you. Let's pray together. I just want you to lift up your heart and your, 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 your soul to God. And this night, I want you to take a response. There will be a chance for you to come to this altar this night to say, Lord, whether it's the issue of an addiction of sin that God is saying, stop struggling with me. Agree that you are wrong and I will turn it around. Agree that you have not done well and I will forgive you and give you a new beginning. Please call on God together with me. But for me, I know I'm a debtor. He said, you are the only family have I known in all the earth. Ah! And I'm saying, oh God, where else could I have gone and met the kind of thing you have shown me? I listen to people over and over and over and over again and I do so with humility and yet I know that they did not know what God has shown us. I have seen very hardworking people but they did not understand the mercy seat that God brought us to. I'm a debtor. So tonight, if as you are praying, the spirit is saying, stop quarreling with me. Go and settle it with God. He said, come, let's settle the matter. Just come before him tonight. Just walk out by yourself. I will not be calling you. I just want you to come out by yourself and say, Lord, enough of this quarreling. 